a new, a new. We might have to reconvene outside because it might be warmer out there. <laughs> So I'll make a motion to reconvene an open session at 7 o'clock. Is there a second? Second. Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Morgier. Here. Vice Chair Burke. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Capwell. Yes. Mrs. Nato. Yes. Mrs. Kubiskis. Yes. Uh, I'll make a motion to seal the closed session minutes of the December 18, 2019 uh, meeting. Is there a second? Second. Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Morgier. Yes. Vice Chair Burke. Yes. Mrs. Capwell. Yes. NATO? Yes. Mrs. Kubiskis? Yes. Would you please stand and join me for a moment of silence and pledge?
of um, a middle school. Um, this is a new schedule that we've been doing this year. It was different from last year. Um, and we started on each day with an advisory. Advisory is the first and last um, 10 minutes of our day. Uh, where we go to our homework with teachers in class to either prepare for our classes that day or uh, to pack up to go home. Um, and the next period is SDL. SDS is an acronym that stands for self-directed learning. Um, that's the period where uh, students will do their own learning with the help and guidance of their teachers. And then um, we have an A day and a B day. So on an A day, and this is different from last year, on an A day we have one period of SCL and two of our four core classes for an hour and a half each, as opposed to having all four core classes for 45 minutes. And then on the B day we have um, two periods of SCL with the other two classes that we didn't have on Monday and then for an hour and a half. Um, and during SDL, we set goals for ourselves that we have to um, keep ourselves accountable for. Mm -hmm. And we have an acronym for that too. It's called SMART Goals. Uh, it's S-M-A-R-T. <coughs> Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-Bound Goals. Um, and that's our time Thank you. Hi, my name is Marcia Lee, and I'm a fifth grade at Little Middle School. I'm also Vice President of Student Council. Today I'll be talking about iExplorer, the iExplorer program. We have iExplorer 1 through 4. They all uh, talk about careers and different pathways that you can take for your career. Um, I'm talking about iExplorer 4 because that is the iExplorer that I'm in. Um, this one class we talked about web design and we've also created websites. But before we created our websites, we've looked at what a web designer does. If you didn't know, a web designer creates uh, websites for companies, they also create the code for websites. The class after we were um, at web design, we created our websites. We went to Google Sites and created our website. We could be about any topic. Um, we have two pages and they're all divided into three different like, sections. We have a picture and a description of that picture or the topic that we're talking about. My topic is about restaurants. We, I have many different facts about each restaurant, such as the amount of locations that we're specifying and the many locations around the market. Um, if you did want to check out our website, uh, you can find it at sites.google.com slash mixofficeschools.com slash best restaurants. Thank you. Hi, my name is Vivian Canales. I am a sixth grader at Riverdale Middle School. Today I will be talking about how I got into student leadership. My home teacher did an election and I got the most votes out of all the candidates and that's how I got in. Now I'm going to talk about our meetings and what we talk about. We have meetings at the and we talk about anti-bullying, panic and patients, and food drives. And um, most importantly, to, for us, the like, students to be welcome and to come to school safe. And now I'm going to talk about school spirit. School spirit that we did is Pajama day, twin day, color day, and then we did color, color day, and then um, the other one, and that's the one 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 and help us do and that's all I got to say. Thank you. Hi, my name is Leilani Sanchez. I am in seventh grade and I attend Villanova Middle School. My topic will be about anti-bullying and the ways that we've raised awareness in our school. First off, we've had class-to-class -class presentations, also known as the I Am A Person Project. This is when Mr. Vieira and a group of students walk around and talk about their experiences with bullying. Another one is the Main Street Stroll. 
that happened very recently. It was on December 7th, and as some pictures in the video showed, we helped decorate a tree that represented different things like unity and diversity. Some of the decorations included the gold ornaments and henna hands. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the Unity Day that we had this year. It was in October 3rd. We had students dress up in orange to raise the awareness for bullying. And an assembly was also held um, where we listened to Mr. Vieira speak about different things like bullying and how people get bullied and why we shouldn't do it and how we can stand up for others. And that's it for today for me. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Angela Martini from my also attend Villanova. I'm a seventh grade student as well. The topic I'm going to be talking about is our PBIS point system. PBIS work acronym standing for Positive Behavioral Interventions and Support. PBIS creates a positive culture in the building. Something, some things that we do with the PBIS is having every team at the beginning of the year make a banner and present it to the whole school and make a fun little competition out of it. Another thing that we do is have an assembly every month with the whole school at the gym, where Mrs. Granado will announce which team has the most amount of points. Then the team that wins gets a reward. Doing this point system has built in pride and encouraged students, and encouraged students to behave. We can earn points using PROP. PROP is another acronym standing for being prepared, respectful, on task, and productive. We earn points in our core and all of our classes. Thank you for your time. Thank you. As you can see, this is why we're part of my leadership team. Uh, leadership team.
leadership uh, and, and, and students, student leadership at Villanova Middle School. I've had the pleasure of knowing many of the students that were here this evening um, since they were in fourth grade. And I'll tell you, they were impressive as fourth graders, and they're, they're maturing and growing into very impressive uh, middle school students. And that's, that's the future of the Woonsocket Education Department. I think we're in really good hands. Um, I did have the pleasure of attending one of their uh, leadership meetings uh, about a month or so ago, and they were, they were correct. We, the topic was, was math, and we talked about RIDAS, and, and it was a very lively, enriching, um, conversation. I learned a lot. They, they didn't hold anything back. So um, they, they were, you know, they, they were just great. And we're just so fortunate to have kids <clears throat> like that here in our district and at Villanova Middle School. And I'm just so proud of them and, and, and what they do. So uh, the Woonsocket Education Department's breakfast program recently received recognition on Channel 10's Health Check Kids Report. The report highlighted the Sodexo Woonsocket breakfast programs, which are both innovative and versatile, and meet the needs of the different schools within the district. One such breakfast program that we're utilizing here in Woonsocket is called the Grab and, Grab and Go, in which students can access breakfast from kiosks located uh, within the schools. Uh, Villanova Middle School and Hamlet Middle School are two of the um, schools that are uh, currently implementing that. The segment uh, was aired on December 5th and is available to view online at the Channel 10 website. The Woonsocket Villanova's football team concluded their 2019 season by winning their second consecutive Division II state championship with a resounding 28-0 victory over Mount Pleasant High School. It was a roller coaster season as the Villanovans started out losing their first four games. However, riding a strong defense led by seniors Corey Brown and Hayden DePaul, they were able to weather the storm and win their last eight games. Shortly after winning the Super Bowl, they went on to win the first Thanksgiving Day football game in nine years by beating rival Cumberland High School 18-15. After the 2019 football season concluded, league coaches nominated 19 Winsocket players for the all-academic team and 10 players for the all-division uh, team. Congratulations to the Villanovans on a truly amazing season. The Woonsocket High School holiday concert was held on December 5th. The music department started the evening off with the jazz band playing Park the Herald Angels Sing, followed by the percussion ensemble, chorus, choir, and concert band. The, amazingly talent, the amazing talents of these student musicians are undeniable. Congratulations to both our students and teachers on a very joyful concert. The annual Woonsocket Smile Family Science Night was held on November 21st at Woonsocket High School. The evening started off with a delicious potluck dinner, followed by interactive presentations by elementary, middle, and high school students. Congratulations to our very creative and curious student scientists and mathematicians, as well as their hardworking teachers on a wonderful evening of staff. Congratulations to Ms. Chris Wright, site coordinator for the Connected for Children and Families After School Program at Woonsocket High School, who was recently named the After School Director of the Year by the Rhode Island After School Network. She's been the coordinator of the After School Program at Woonsocket High School since 2011. Funding for the program comes from federal 21st century learning grants, which are supervised by CCF. As part of the grant requirements, these programs are designed to teach skills to, to, to students who can use them later in life. Working with a team of three others, Chris oversees several after-school clubs and activities offered by CCF in partnership with Woonsocket High School. These include everything from a school newspaper to a video game design club to science clubs and a creative writing class. The program serves between 100 and 150 students daily. Woonsocket High School students can sign up for individual clubs and programs or drop uh, into the library for an after-school help three days a week. Ms. Wright was one of five individuals honored during the Lights On After School Summit at the Crown Plaza Hotel in late October. As part of the award, she received a $1,000 mini-grant to support supplies and stipends for the CCF program. Congratulations to Ms. Wright for this outstanding award. When Socket Middle School Band and Chorus Holiday Concert was held on December 11th. The concert included winter-themed selections, the wonderful students and their teachers work tirelessly to prepare music for their winter concert and then look forward to their spring concert. Congratulations to the student musicians 
and their teachers on a great night. Congratulations to Winsaka High School senior Holly Lippicom on receiving the 2020 Herbert E. Kaplan Youth in Philanthropy Scholarship Award. The Kaplan Youth in Philanthropy Scholarship is available to a student graduating from a Rhode Island High School in June 2020 who has demonstrated a history of philanthropy and volunteerism. Holly has a very long and impressive resume at Winsaka High School. She's been the class president for the past three years. She's dedicated her time to helping her school, peers, and the community alike. She's taken a leadership role in many activities, including organizing community chaperones and donations for her school's junior prom, serving as a student liaison on the school's XQ Foundation planning grant, and serving as a peer mentor for incoming freshman students. It's truly an honor to call Holly a Villanova. This past week, CVS Health donated seven iPad Airs with brand new protected cases to the Woonsocket Education Department. On behalf of the district, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank CVS for their generous donation and for always being kind and generous to the students and staff of the Woonsocket Education Department. And lastly, I'd like to wish everyone in the Woonsocket Education Department and the Woonsocket community a very healthy, uh, happy, and restful holiday season. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Um, I want to add my congratulations to Mrs. Wright, and I also want to add my congratulations to our football team, who were phenomenal, especially the way the season began. So congratulations to the coaches and to our student athletes. And I can say that the Winsocket Middle School Holiday Concert was really an incredible event. And, um, the Winsocket High Auditorium was packed, and Mrs. Kopiskis and I attended that concert, which was really incredible. Um, the chorus sang beautifully, and uh, the band <coughs> orchestra really played well. So it was a lot of fun to be there, and um, like you, we look forward to the spring concert. Anyone else would like to make any mentions to regarding the record of the concert? If not, I'll... Oh, no. But you sure. have a little briefly. Yeah, uh, sure. We can comment on the Osaka High School concert. Yes. Which we're so excited. This is this kiss, this Capwell, and myself, and Dr. McGee. Uh, we were there, and uh, as always, um, Mr. Depot and the Ms. Alves, uh, they put on a great show, and, and as, I, as I write to them almost every year to say, you know, thank you. And also, I appreciate the diversity of the selections that they present. Uh, it's really so creative on your part. So, we also enjoyed the high school concert, too. Wonderful. I'm glad you did. I miss Cal and I will, yeah, and, and I'll, I'll add my, my own two cents on that as well. Um, it, it's, as much as I absolutely loved the selection and the talent, what I truly appreciated was seeing how much the students appreciated their teachers and their mentors, whether it just be through standing up and gift giving, that they make a true impact and that, that that's that student body absolutely appreciates the work that they're doing. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a question. I truly enjoy the high school and I'm going to that because I'm um, not really a member of the band What's an iPad here? I'll express my ignorance. I have no idea what that is. Mrs. Kapiska, you bring your mic down with your dad. Thank you. Does that work? Oh, yes. Okay. Much better. Can you tell me what an iPad Can someone tell me what an iPad here is? I'm going to try. Um, I'm going to. I'm not going to say it's, 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 it's a. <laughs> it's uh, and Mr. Tariani is looking over here at me like I don't really know what I'm going to be talking about, but so uh, I probably know. So I may I may be deferring to Mr. Tariani. Um, an, an iPad. Um, I, I would imagine that it's it's a newer edition iPad. Wow, that's all you've got. That's, that's all I have. That's all I have. Warming up now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to refer to my colleague, Mr. Perry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I know. It's just right, another, gener it's not another generation iPad. Yeah, it's just one of the Thank you. It's just a, another way for them to use the same device and slightly tweak the camera and make you pay thousands of dollars for it. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Okay.
I'll make a motion receiving place on file the recognitions and announcements. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next we'll look at the approval of minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the November 20th, 2019 open session minutes. Is there a second? Second. Any corrections, deletions, adjustments? If not, Dr. McKee, roll call. Chairman Borgia? Yes. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. Mrs. Capwell? Yes. Mrs. Nato? Yes. Mrs. Kibiscus? Yes. Next, uh, we'll go into the consent agenda, and I'll make a motion to discuss and approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Um, I would like to uh, look at the personal actions, the personnel actions. What is, my question is, what is an induction coach? It seems like we have quite a few, right? Listed, I have no idea what that is. Who's gonna help me understand that? Is that Mr. Montoriani or Dr. Holt? Nope, that would be me. Um, so an induction coach is part of our new hire program. Uh, induction coaches are veteran teachers in the district who we've identified who have certain expertise in their classrooms and, have, uh, and are able to model um, instruction to our new teachers and to work alongside our brand new teachers as they come into the profession. We have 10 across the district. Right. So is this, is this a new salary position? Or is no, this... these have been here in our title funding for, for a few years. They're not new. Right. Dr. Chairman, don't, um, this is, this is both, um, don't we also have a mentoring program? We do, yes. So, so we have is, it, is this the same thing? Yep, there are two parts to our induction or new hire program. We have induction coaches and me new mentor teachers. Induction coaches work, work with teachers who are brand new to the profession, and our new teacher mentors work with teachers who come to us with experience outside of our district. So we're helping them to unsocketize their experience here. Okay. Anyone else want to take anything on or go to consent agenda? Very, very proud of the work that 
our, our district is doing and that, that the high school is doing to continuously improve our graduation rate. And you know, the, the goal is, is to hit 80%. And uh, I think we're, we're certainly well on the way. So I, I welcome any questions the committee has. Anyone? Any thoughts? The second agenda item is an update on our elementary truancy court. Uh, the last time I spoke with the committee was uh, prior to the start of the uh, elementary truancy court, which was in November. And at the time, the committee had asked me if I would uh, just present a, a brief update on, on how things are going. So I, I did have a conversation with um, Roger Pickard, uh, Senator Pickard, who is uh, our one of our one of our two uh, district attendance officers, and he has indicated to me that there there has been so far two sessions with the magistrate. Uh, one of the most recent was in November. <coughs> we have in, in the month of November there were four cases uh, across our our elementary schools, and if you recall at the last meeting, I talked about. Uh, what we were going to use in terms of a cutoff for what grades and, and the number of absences. And the number of absences is, is sort of based on, on each school and, and, the, and the, the number of students in grades K, 1, and 2, which is where we're primarily focusing on. Um, so, so it varies from school to school with respect to the number of absences. But it would be families who uh, either Mr. Pickard, the building administrator, the, um, the building uh, social workers or counselors have already reached out to families are trying to provide support to them. This is, this is kind of the next step in that process. In January, which is the next scheduled session with Magistrate uh, Paulus, we are going to be adding uh, eight more cases. And then in February, they are anticipating that they're going to be adding about 12 more cases. So. By February, we would have, would have reached approximately 25 cases, which was about the number. Uh, we were looking to go between 20 and 25 cases each year. So we will we'll have met that by February. Um, anecdotally, um, Mr. Pickard has said that those students and families that are currently in truancy court, they, they have seen already an improvement in their attendance, which is what this is all about provide supports to families and assistance so that their children uh, do start coming to school regularly. So I'm very excited about the, the preliminary information that I've, I've received from Mr. Pickard. And you know, as we move through the, the remainder of the year, um, probably maybe sometime in the, in the spring, I'll come back to the committee uh, with even more information and more data uh, from, uh, from this year. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any, anyone have any comments, questions of our superintendent? If not, I'll make a motion to receive and place on file the superintendent's report. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next we'll go into the school subcommittee reports. We'll start with the policy subcommittee. And I'll turn it over to Mrs. Kapiskas. Just to clarify, we haven't had a, a full policy subcommittee meeting our last one, but we did have a meeting at the high school on December 11th to review some materials from the council, uh, to pull Sarah report and Caroline people as to issues that we feel need to be addressed, that they feel need to be fully addressed. Um, we met for about two hours and we discussed issues around uh, our lack of a Title IX policy, that the policy that we don't currently have a specific Title IX policy, and our anti-harassment policy and anti-discrimination policies are believed to be not sufficient. Um, we're also looking at reviewing our disciplinary policy in conjunction with that, as well as our student exclusion policy in conjunction with Title IX and anti-discrimination and anti-harassment policies. Um, we're also going to be looking at our threat assessment policy as a result of legislation that was introduced in the state and approved by the General Assembly. It requires us to have threat assessment team. We have crisis teams. We're going to build off of that to develop the threat assessment team. But the policy, policy subcommittee is going to be developing a threat assessment policy to address those issues as well. And this is also going to be a review of our tech policy to move into 
regard to our content filter policy, and some issues raised by the ACLU as to how our process works in terms of getting um, content approved uh, to be unblocked in the school system. So in particular, we're focusing on because those policies, and in particular, the process of how those policies are going to be developed, who's responsible for writing them, when they will be given to the policy subcommittee members for review, hopefully well in advance of our meeting at least the Friday before our next meeting. But at our next meeting, um, as a result of this meeting, the policy subcommittee meeting on January 21st is going to look a little different than what we've been doing because we're going to have, it's going to be a pretty significant meeting, we're going to be looking at the homeschooling policy, which we've been working on for a while, the student assessment policy, the student exclusion policy, a proposed type of line policy, proposed anti-harassment policy, and a tech content policy. Um, we will tackle these where we asked that um, legal counsel have those policies to the membership by January 17th, which is a Friday before our meeting on Tuesday, and give everyone a chance to review them, to have a meaningful discussion. Um, so I expect this policy is probably going to be, a, this meeting is going to be a little bit heavier than some of our prior meetings. Uh, but I did want to, uh, I discussed it with the chair, but he wanted us to bring uh, to the attention of the entire school committee that these issues were going to be worked on in policy, hopefully voted out of the policy subcommittee, so we'll be reaching our agenda sooner rather than later. That's essentially it. I think it's important um, for these for the policies to go to the subcommittee as, as soon as possible because they should be coming up to us for voting, and I guess Sarah is here to come. We'll be writing the policies, drafting them yes. for the subcommittee to review, yes. and then which will then come to the, the, the whole body of the school committee. Right, we'll go to the subcommittee first, and then it work. Well, it's very important um, because it's been a while since we've seen the policies, and I was wondering, and um, my discussion with Mrs. Kapiskis was. We're out of it. Well, we don't have them, we promise. So they need, they definitely got to have them at least the weekend before the meeting, because if they get them on the day of the meeting, that's that's worthless, because they can't react to it. But, excellent. That's good. Anyone else? I'll make a motion to receive in place on file the policy subcommittee report. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, technology subcommittee. Uh, Mrs. Capwell and Mr. Uh, Chief Burke. If you notice, I didn't say to Mrs. Kapiski, but give me time and I'll make it. I told you, I think it's a compliment. Um, so the Technology Subcommittee uh, met on Tuesday, December 10th at 6 p.m. in the building. Um, the attendants were Alvin Toriani, Brad Perrier, uh, Jessica Donato, Heather Neal, Jeff Barrow, Phil Webb, uh, Dr. Angel, and myself. Um, as I go through, some of the topics, as I spoke to them in our last meeting, will seem somewhat redundant because of a lot of our agenda items covered the previous topics, but we had um, updates as to, to progress uh, <coughs> throughout. Um, probably the biggest topic at our subcommittee meeting. Mrs. Campbell, could yes. you please um, bring your mic down? We can't hear you. Oh, okay. Wow. There we go. Um, Probably our, our biggest topic was um, the continuing conversations around our fleet of Chromebooks coming to end of life in 2021. So the team is continuing their due diligence to present back to the committee a recommendation around um, how we're going to resolve this issue. Uh, are we going to lease new equipment? Should we be buying them? Should it be a three-year lease, a five-year lease? And so we anticipate that information to be forthcoming. Um, from a timing perspective, we need to be making a decision around this in the spring of next year. And so sometime around that point, that's going to be brought forth to the committee to, to rec make a recommendation on. Um, as far as upcoming and ongoing projects uh, that Al and team have underway, last time we spoke around um, how our server closets are in need of some modification just due to the current environment. Um, this may also be a crossover into the facilities subcommittee, knowing that um, one of our vendors, RGW, will be coming in to complete a survey of those closets, develop a recommended scope for the pricing. Um, this will then be added into our five-year capital plan, and we'll make some um, uh, approvals going forth from that. Uh, our security cameras are still on the radar, or as they're failing, um, Al and team are making those one-for-one -one swaps. And the key 
PFOB um, access to be used throughout the district where every school is currently using a different PFOB um, system. That process of progress is still underway. We'll get updates to the team um, as, as time goes on. And then the last time uh, we spoke, we talked about record keeping in forms and having utilizing some new software for document holding. Um, when I reported it the last time, the effort was going to be initiated to upload IEPs. Um, since that time, the plan has, has changed, and I, I think appropriately so. We're going to actually have um, an upload of the 504s. Um, it's a smaller scope. It'll give the opportunity to test out the new software, make sure that it's um, we're working out any things um, prior to going after that larger um, document repository and scanning of, of the IEPs. Um, as part of that conversation, there is also the recognition um, that we need to be mindful of cybersecurity, so that will be an ongoing um, topic that needs to be addressed. Uh, not knowing if everybody is familiar with some of the recent issues that districts in Rhode Island have had, and then also, you know, if you're looking at the news, New Orleans is under a state of emergency due to, you know, cybersecurity issues. So now that we will be seeing ourselves moving towards um, utilizing this, uh, this, this software and uploading our documents, we need to be considerate of that. So that will be an ongoing topic. Just a couple of just comments, questions. The Chromebooks that are looking to upgrade, change, whatever, will that get next year's budget, Mr. Perrier? Do you think that's that's going to be an expense that we're going to have to deal with for this coming year? In next year's budget, yeah, I think, I think that will be something that we're going to need to talk about. Okay. And is this a replacement of all the Chromebooks, or is this staggered by school, or by grade? Is how do we know which ones to keep and which ones not to keep? So, so it'll be staggered. We'll be addressing the elementary schools first. If the community calls, um, or some of the members of the community will call, we implemented the Chromebook initiative at the elementary level first, and then we phased in the middle school and the high school. So we'll be looking at a kind of phased in approach. Um, at, at some point, we'll be, we'll be matching everything up so it's on, 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 the, um, on the same upgrade schedule because. Without getting into too much detail, we did discuss that at the last subcommittee or the previous one. Um, the Chromebooks, when they were purchased, were purchased in such a way that um, eventually we would match it all up. So I'm trying to avoid the staggered approach. I'm trying to look towards leasing, just get a fixed payment, which is very good to talk about the benefits of that in greater detail. But we, we purchased the Chromebooks um, based on year of manufacture. So the Chromebooks that we purchased at the elementary level and the high school and middle school level, we bought them. So they were new, they may have already been a year old in, in, in storage at, at the facility when we purchased them, rather than buying brand new right off of the, the manufacturing line. And that was purposely done in a coordinated effort to make sure at some point that everything matched up and we were operating all at the same time. So over the next couple of years, you're going to see that phase and it will be a complete total upgrade every so often versus a hodgepodge approach that, that's really um, unwieldy in terms of finances. I think you'll get a much more consistent look, or it'll be much more consistent with a lease. Uh, you're going to have a fixed cost every year. Uh, it probably might cost a few more dollars overall. Again, we haven't finished running the numbers, but you won't have these spikes where we do, where you try to buy a million dollars of computers one year to get things caught up and, you know, go on with that. Uh, in terms of cybersecurity, you may have mentioned it. Have we begun a process of reviewing where we stand? Uh, to hopefully avoid uh, the ransomware issues like New Orleans and East Greenwich have suffered at this point? Yes, so we briefly discussed the, the cyber um, security and the cyber threats and what, what we're doing. So um, just briefly, we, we are in the process of reviewing. We have backup protocols in place. We've had them in place for, for many years here in the district. Most of our financial software is hosted off-site backed up regularly through the vendors. It's not something we actually post inside, which, uh, on site, which a lot of these um, situations you're hearing about in the newspaper and in the news are because these individual organizations are hosting their data and their insight on this server um, where they're responsible for the backups and they're responsible for the upkeep and the maintenance of the servers and whatnot. Um, here in Woodstock, and this is prior to my, um, my tenure here, both our student information system and our financial management system 
which Mr. Perry brought into the district, are both hosted what's called in the cloud, meaning that they're hosted off-site um, with a particular vendor. They're responsible for the monthly backups. So if we were to be attacked, under the initial approach um, is once we get internet restored here in the district, we can then reconnect back up to our software where our data is located, and we can resume business as quickly as we can get the internet up and running versus an organization or another um, municipality here in, in the state or across the country where if they're hosting it inside, inside the, in the district, it basically if their server was down, it was down until they could fix this server. We're, we're in a unique situation where we've been proactive. Again, years ago, we were proactive in some of our purchases, and that's enabled us to um, be in better shape than some of the other municipalities. But we are conducting a review. It's always a good idea to be vigilant in terms of, of what's going on. Um, in terms of technology, and we are reviewing our processes. We'll be in contact, um, we're going through a checklist that was, you know, the chairman forwarded on with your, your meeting you had with the, the state police and the, and the um, Rhode Island National Guard, and we're going through the checklist they distributed in the presentation. Once we've completed our self-assessment, we'll be in contact with them to invite them in to do an assessment on our systems here. And hopefully, hopefully they don't pick up any, but if they do, we'll pick up any vulnerabilities that we can then address or, or um, you know, take care of it. I think one of the more frightening aspects of that uh, you know, dinner that I attended in the meeting with the um, school committee chairman and when the state police, the National Guard, FBI, and Homeland Security gave presentations about cybersecurity and ransomware, they said those of you who have us uh, back in your files and saving files in the cloud, you think you'd be safe. That's not the case. That was, the, the, I thought, the scariest uh, thought that they gave us because they, they have seen and witnessed uh, situations where the cloud didn't protect. So I'm glad that we're doing our own assessment ahead of this review, and I look forward to seeing what they think, especially when they look at it. So the last thing we would ever want is all of a sudden we've got ransomware on our computers and now we're paying ridiculous prices to get our files, and in one case, at least one, the payment was made to these crooks, and the files were not released. So the, that community lost all their files. So that is frightening. It's, it's worth it to do the work that we're doing uh, to make sure. Any other thoughts? Make a motion to receive and place on file the technology subcommittee report. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next, we'll have the facilities subcommittee report. Uh, Mrs. Nato and I attended the facilities subcommittee. Uh, and I'm going to turn this over to our director just to give us the highlights of that meeting. So, the facilities subcommittee was convened on Tuesday, December 3rd at 11 a.m. in the conference room. Uh, some of the topics that were discussed were the the facilities were the high school hallway heating units, where they're presently under review. Um, those are some of the oldest heating units here in the district. Um, we have a failure of a couple of units in the last couple of months, so those are currently being reviewed by one of our outside vendors, and they'll be making some recommendations as to whether or not they can be easily repaired, um, if it's a moderate expense, or whether or not something needs to be put to our five-year capital plan. We also discussed the closing of the windows Field Savoy Window Project and Boiler Project. That um, project will be um, substantially completed. It's, it's completed, but what Ryan defines is substantially completed and closed out by the end of this month, the end of January, I believe. Correct. Right. So that project is um, is pretty much wrapping up. We discussed briefly the trust, of the Rhode Island Trust parking lot review. Um, the Rhode Island Trust, our insurance carrier, reviewed all of our parking lots and crosswalks and sidewalks to make sure that there were no safety issues, um, the review was forwarded on to us, and we've been using that plan to address any minor repairs that we can do in-house, and again, anything major will be sent out to the five year capital plan. We briefly talked about summer 2020 projects, um, drainage at the Coltier Elementary School, at Harris Elementary School, and the playground, uh, the new playgrounds for Leo Savoy and both of your citizens um, campus. We talked about the steps that are underway and the future steps we need to undertake with RIDE with regard to the five-year capital plan. We outlined the timeline, and we'll have our initial application for February, and our second or stage two application will be submitted in September. 
Um, we discuss the district risk assessment legislation, which um, this gets indicated will be going to the policy subcommittee for, for review to have a policy as required by uh, the General Assembly. We talked about um, the crossing guard initiative, so we are currently um, looking for crossing guards at our elementary schools uh, to cross students in the mornings and the afternoons. We are entertaining a proposal by Sodexo to upgrade the pool cafeteria, uh, the serving line area. That's a project we'd like to initiate, get some proposals for, and get completed before June 30th through the current fiscal year. And finally, we briefly talked about the appeals process and the mileage policy regarding student transportation here in the district. And we felt the need that um, in the coming months we'll be forwarding on some ideas to the policy subcommittee for review and modification to existing policy and to um, go forward. Thank you. Any questions, comments? I'll make a motion to receive and place on file the um, facility subcommittee report. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Next, we'll turn it over to Mr. Perrier for the financial update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in front of you is the November 2019 fiscal update. Uh, a few of the financial highlights um, we'll talk about here quickly. Uh, at the time, all revenues are on schedule to meet budget other than Medicaid reimbursement. Uh, the Soccer Education Department is currently awaiting the finalization of the insurance from the state that uh, dollars paid directly to DCYF will be eligible for Medicaid reimbursement. Um, I've got indications that this is in the works. Um, what's happened this year is now for DCYF play students, we are now paying DCYF directly. We're no longer playing, paying the out-of-district placement. So there's been some hesitation, uh, this some conversation uh, amongst the school, school districts that will this be eligible for Medicaid reimbursement. As these are very large expenses, we want to make sure that that is resolved before we continue paying. Uh, at this time, we have all of our requisitions in for DCYF, but I haven't released any payments yet. So our fiscal, uh, our fiscal projections do include this money, but we haven't released any of those dollars yet as part of the requisitions. So that's something that we're awaiting final, as the final word on from the state before we proceed with paying DCYF. On the expenditure side, right now, all salaries are projected to be $649,000 under budget at this time uh, uh, across all salary lines. When that would be $836K employee term allowance, the district is $187K over budget on salaries, which is, uh, which is pretty close to the $44 million budget there. Uh, at this time, uh, all employee contracts have been approved by the school committee to date have been covered in the system, and there are no FY19 salary expenditures being booked in FY20. Uh, everything is in its proper fiscal year. Anticipated employee turnover throughout the year should help bring these numbers back into balance by the time the end of the year rolls around. Our, Medicaid, uh, our medical expenses are currently $1.3 million under budget. We did have a slight pickup over the last time we did this, but this number has been pretty steady uh, month over month as I've been tracking it this year. Um, again, this is still pretty early. Uh, we're through November, but I think we're getting to the point where we can get a little more comfortable with this number. Again, barring anything crazy happening, which it's happened before, but. Uh, it's something that we can get a little more comfortable with, that we are going to have a surplus on that line, uh, and we'll continue to monitor it going forward. Currently, the Soccer Education Department is running $69,000 under budget for HVAC repairs. We've actually started to dip into this number a little bit. We, we did uh, increase it uh, quite a bit last year, or quite a bit for this fiscal year, uh, but we're still under budget. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, we'll continue to be under budget, but it has trended up about $150,000 over the last time we did a fiscal update. Uh, transportation is currently projected to be $195,000 over budget, and uh, we've had some conversations about that. That is due to the uh, increased cost through uh, statewide transportation. Mr. Toriani and I have had some conversations about maybe possibly looking at some other options we have other than statewide. Uh, this is something that uh, finance directors across the state have kind of begun a conversation on is, well, how can we get a little more efficient here? Because uh, uh, there's, some, there's some thought that maybe uh, locally we can do a little bit better for ourselves. So that's something that we're going to be looking at going forward as that expense has grown tremendously over the last year and a half. Uh, 
Madam District tuitions are currently projected uh, to be under budget by 144K. Uh, but the special education department has managed to bring back several students uh, since the last time we did an update, and this has significantly reduced the expense. So uh, it's uh, going really well here. And we've taken some of that savings and we've rolled it into the purchase order for a ride to help offset some of that increased transportation cost. And finally, electricity is currently projected to be $152,000 over budget. Still too early to really get hung up on that uh, as the winter really, the next three, two to three months bills are really going to be what makes or breaks us on that line. But that's something that we'll uh, keep an eye on as we go forward. Uh, we still have a $1 million transfer in from fund balance to cover our, uh, to cover us and to create a balanced budget and our balanced projection for this year. Really, month, really since we last did an update in September, there's really not been a lot of movement on these numbers. They've stayed pretty consistent throughout uh, the last couple of months, and we're still on projection. We're still on pace for a small surplus of a little over twelve thousand dollars once we make that transfer. So, is there another transfer of three hundred thousand that I see for indirect costs? Yeah, that's uh, that's Selena this time we made at the uh, end of the year. Uh, that's. Uh, money that the indirect costs help cover, they're transferred in from grants, and they help cover uh, local employees who, who work on grants, uh, and that's the way the grant reimbursement. them. And I assume there is no indication at this time that RIDE would be giving us more funding. The state would not be giving us any more funding than what we're showing here. Oh, for fiscal year 19? No, these numbers are set. This is, this point. yeah. There's always some surprises Seems once we get to the end of the fiscal year. Um, I don't think you're going to have any surprises. Or Easter eggs. You know, it's like going on an egg hunt. In yeah. The world. We had some money. Yeah. So. You're not expecting any eggs. Uh, no, not from that line. Certainly not. Okay. Anyone have any questions, comments? Mr. Perry, I mean, Jim. Uh, Mr. Perry, you just got, got one number again. A projected surplus right now $12,000. Correct. That's it? Well, it's, yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Well, did you want more? Yes, I did. Uh, um, well, it's actually, we have a uh, fund balance transfer in, so it's actually, it's not it's even actually that, quite frankly. It's $88,000 deficit. And, and during the contract negotiations, I do just want to kind of put it out there that we were anticipating eating into our fund balance this year. <coughs> This is not something that's surprising. This is something that we've been preparing for. We knew we had contract negotiations. It took us 15 months. We finally got it done. But we knew that we were going to have to dip into our fund balance to get this contract done. And this is, this is what you're seeing right here. Hopefully, if some of the anticipated medical uh, expenditures and other expenditures become lower than we project, then we won't have to dip into our reserve as much. We, we did get some preliminary FY21 numbers from the state, and, and they do look promising at the time. At, at this time, uh, it looks like we will be picking up a little bit more from the state in 21, but it's far, far too early right. to get hung up on, on that. So uh, we're going to keep our eyes on the road and, and continue to manage the best we can and do the best we can with the dollars we have. Right. Well, anyway, the dip into the reserves is is to be less than what we had anticipated when we were sitting in negotiation. That, that, much is, less. that is correct, Mr. Chairman. We, we are having to go into the sur surplus quite as much as we had, so uh, we're ahead on that on that portion. Uh, but it, it, we were anticipating doing this. So. Anyone else? I'll make a motion to receive police on file for the financial update. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, uh, Mr. Perrier. Good job as usual. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, we'll get into new business. Uh, I'll make a motion to discuss and approve the appointment of a technology specialist, Dr. Medine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We need a second. Second. There you go, Dr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am pleased to recommend Mr. Adam Arruda as technology specialist for the Winsocket Education Department. Most recently, Mr. Arruda worked for In Music Brands as the technical support specialist, as well as Expressions and Kodak Behavioral Healthcare. Adam is a Rhode Island College graduate, holds a bachelor's degree in computer information systems. Based on his past experience, 
I recommend Mr. Adam Arruda as a technology specialist for the Woonsocket Education Department. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Nadine. Any comments? Dr. Shiver. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, just a question. Is this a, a new position, or are we filling an empty position? We are filling uh, an empty budgeted vacant position. So two, two empty budgeted. Correct. Anyone else? Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Borget? Yes. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. Mrs. Capwell? Yes. Mrs. Nato? Yes. Mrs. Kapetskis? Yes. Thank you. Let me see here. Okay. Next, I'll make a motion to discuss and approve the appointment of a technology specialist. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Dr. McGee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am pleased to recommend Mrs. Linda Tracy as a technology specialist for the Woonsocket Education Department. Mrs. Tracy has worked for the Woonsocket Education Department, first as a substitute, and then a Medicaid IEP specialist for the past two years. During this time, she worked diligently to organize and coordinate support for both faculty, staff, and students needing technology and facilities assistance. Her organizational skills are exceptional, and during her tenure as Medicaid IEP specialist, she was instrumental in streamlining our data entry process for state reporting. Meeting critical deadlines is not an easy task in a district the size of Woonsocket, and Linda has handled all requests with ease. Mrs. Tracy will be an outstanding technology specialist for the Woonsocket Education Department. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Uh, I know Mrs. Uh, Tracy uh, from, from work that we do at the Knights of Columbus, uh, and I will be recusing myself from this vote because it's a personal relationship, and so we will proceed with that. Is there anyone else that have any comments? Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Boyget? Staying. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. Mrs. Capwell? Yes. Mrs. Nato? Yes. Mrs. Kubeskis? Yes. Mrs. Tracy, please stand and be recognized.
So again, no, no impact on the general fund for either of those two. The $32,000 for the Honda Odyssey and the $57,000 for the bus. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Okay. What about the other funds? Uh, the other two, we do have additional funding uh, for these through our building, our capital, our building improvements, and our capital improvements that we'll be able to utilize if we get into trouble down the road. Question mark? Anyone else? Back to the new roll call. Chair Borget. Yes. Vice Chair Burr. Yes. Mrs. Capwell. Yes. Mrs. Dato. Yes. Mrs. Pudeskis. Yes. Next, I'll make a motion to discuss and approve uh, bid 20 08 multifunction school activity bus with wheelchair lift. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Perrier. Uh, yes, this is the uh, bid for the bus and the wheelchair lift. Uh, again, this is categorical funding, no impact on the general fund. Um, for this bid, uh, we received three bids actually. Uh, the lowest being uh, New England Transit sales at fifty-seven thousand eight hundred forty-nine dollars. Mr. Chairman, Mr. thank you. Um, how have we dealt with this in the past with the student that's in a wheelchair being transported? Well, uh, quite frankly, uh, Mr. Chairman, we, or Mr. Vice Chairman, we've never had money, uh, and we've never really looked at this in quite some time. Uh, the Korean Tech does have some very old vehicles, and they're vehicles that we're looking to upgrade, and that's where those categorical dollars came in this year. Is we took the money from, we took the budget of money, and applied it uh, towards upgrading these vehicles. And again, because really for the Korean Tech, getting out in the community and getting that real work experience is, is crucial to uh, part of the education process. So uh, this is something that we. Uh, prioritize this year. Uh, Mr. Webb, I worked with Mr. Webb on putting the grant together or developing the budget, and this is where we landed. But, but this particular vehicle is for wheelchair access, correct? Excuse me? This has a wheelchair lift to it. Yes, it does. So, they, they would borrow the high schools? What's that? Right now they borrow the high school. They, they would borrow the high school as two vans. One of them is handicapped accessible. They would use that um, when they need to accommodate a student that uh, was handicapped uh, in a wheelchair. The Korea Tech Center would use a high school van. Uh, now they're going to have their own at their disposal uh, as necessary, which is a much better situation than trying to coordinate between uh, competing, not competing programs, but two different programs that might be running some initiatives at the same time. Just to clarify, so we'll have three of these vans now in, in the education department. We will have three of them, yes. Well, we'll have two of them. The third one, we're not sure if we'll be able to keep in operation much longer. It's one of the older ones. So we'll have those two that you mentioned, one of them is dying. Correct. Okay. So there is a, a real need for it, rather than we have the money so we can spend it. Oh, well. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, all I want to hear. There's, uh, there's some, been some significant repairs done to that van. Luckily, we have uh, automotive students who actually managed to keep this van on the road much longer than, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a safety issue. I don't want anybody to think that, but they've done a great job keeping that van running, and it's time to be replaced. I, I would speak to the fact that moving forward, when we're looking at van purchases in, in general here in the district, that we always look to opt to buy a handicap accessible van. Um, if we can afford to, just because of uh, the fact that I think that's just the right move to make in terms of being prepared and having some foresight in terms of how we're going to do things in terms of van purchases. Why buy a van that doesn't have the accessibility and we need it down the road? So if we've got the state money, it's not our money, I think it's, it's a good purchase to, to move forward with having that uh, flexibility built in. And I would propose, going forward, all the vans that we purchase, the small type vans such as these, not a school bus, but small type vans that, that we do look to that handicap option. It just, I think, makes sense. But I agree with Vice Chair Burke. It's not the availability of the money that, that should spare this, this purchase. It should be the need that we need, we have to have this. One of the vans is really uh, under disrepair, ready to die, and thank God our students got A's in their courses in terms of motor repair uh, so that we can afford it. But it's, it's not the fact we've got the grant money to buy it, it's we've got the need, and then we've got the grant money to buy it. 
We're not making the purchase because, oh, here's the money and it's available, let's do it. It's, yes. it there's, a, there's a need, this purchase is a need case. And please, I, I, I bring this up, not to criticize, but I think we needed the conversation. I think we needed an explanation on the reason why some of these things are being purchased. Because these are pretty hefty purchases. So, thank you, Kurt. Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Borget? Yes. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. Mrs. Capwell? Yes. Mrs. Nato? Yes. Mrs. Kubiskis? Yes. This next one should be interesting. I'll make a motion to discuss and approve bid 20-10 for an in-bed anti-ice system. Is there a second? Second. I did? Oh, yes, I did. I'll come back over. We're on 29. I'm so excited about the ice. Is there a second? You got a second? Second. Oh, yeah. Um, that's correct. Well, let's have a motion to take bid 20-10 out of water. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Now we're on 20 10 Mr. Perrier, talk to us about the anti ice system. I'd like to defer to Mr. Toriani on this one. Perfect. <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman, this, uh, the other term for this would be the grinding crack. This, <laughs> This is a uh, this 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 piece of equipment will allow us to pre-treat the parking lots and roadways around our schools before the winter weather hits. Which um, recently here at the Middle School there was a, a function in the evening that had we um, Brian I think the parking lots would have been in better shape versus trying to treat with uh, sand and rock salt. So this is a pre-treated uh, option. This is something that, that currently the city of Socket does to all of their roadways before a storm hits and. What we generally do is we have to reach out to the city and ask them when they're done able to, uh, when they're done treating the city roads, if they have time for the come treat some of our parking lots. We've worked very well with them in, in the past, but this would allow us to be able to do it um, during our timeline versus having to go out in the city. It's quite a large city, and they've got quite a bit of work to do for themselves. So this would allow them to to take an existing um, truck and outfit it with the, uh, the in-bed anti-ice system. Let me ask you, this is going to be used for all the schools? Yes. Are you going to have time? In one truck? One truck. And they're, they're going to do this at night? You know, yes. you say the storm is coming, so they're going to... Yes. I don't see, it seem, doesn't the city have a lot of, quite a few of these trucks? I'm, I'm not sure how many of the city has, I can't speak to. Just saying, they cover the roads, so we've got 12 buildings? Yes, so one truck, buildings. We'll, we'll cover ours with the one truck, and then we have two trucks that uh, run the sand and salt operation, which we also treat the parking lots with. So between those three vehicles, um, we'll be treating with both uh, the Brian solution that we'll be purchasing for the city, along with the um, rock salt we'll be purchasing for the city to treat all of our lots before storms. We'll then be following with the trucks that we have in existence, and then we will be, um, this will not be operation on the cleanup side of it, but we'll be treating again with the rock salt at the end of the storm. So this completes the full circle in terms of how we would treat uh, a bunch of stone here and put school guns on the side. Have we not treated, we have treated, we, we have laid out sand and rock salt for the buildings at this point. And what makes this anti-ice system uh, so great? Why do you think we really need that? Other than it will help uh, or it will lessen the time it takes to cover the lots. Because you're not, you're not going to do every lot. Well, we're going to attempt to do every lot, yes. So we currently, right now, when a storm is approaching, we can currently pre-treat our lots with the sand and salt mixture. Yeah. Um, it's not as effective. In my conversation with uh, the Department of Public Works, you know, it's not as effective as when we brine. Um, that's one of the things that we're changing in terms of our operation. And then the second one, which we'll be exploring in the very near future, is changing over from the sand and salt mix to just the salt mix um, to melt down any of the ice that you see you know, yesterday, this morning, and again this evening. So um, those are the two changes, and we're supposed to get uh, um, what's been explained to me a much uh, superior result to um, how our, our property looks during these storms in terms of, you know, versus what we're getting now. So this is, should be a preventative measure to prevent things from um, sticking and accumulating as quickly as it does. We're still going to have to go plow, just like every other major, major roadway. It's just uh, this is supposed to be a much better system in place than what we're doing now. Anyone? Of course. 
chairman. Um, the, the bride, okay. you say we purchase it from the city? Correct. Well, we, we reimburse the city for whatever they, they, they are charged. Okay. Well, they made it, though. The city was not they made it. Yeah, that was the cost that they made it yesterday. But well, they used to help us with our parking lots. Did we pay them? No. Uh, yes, no, no, yes we did. We had to pay them several times uh, for when the big cats came down to move snow out of our five lots, yes. Not recently, uh, but historically, yes, there, we've been charged for that before. So, so when they were able to, to bring the bond from our parking lots, you did you pay the city for that? So I stand corrected. I, um, so we, so I've not requested, they've not grinded the parking lots at our request since, uh, since I've, in the position here in the district. Okay, so. But when they did, we paid. We paid, yeah. The mayor has given it to us for free. She doesn't. She has a budget. Any, anyone else? Dr. McGee? Chair Boucher? Yes. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. Mrs. Capwell? Yes. Mrs. Nato? Yes. Mrs. Kapiskis? Yes. Next, I'll make a motion to discuss and approve bid number 20-09. Honda Odyssey X. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Perrier. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is the final bid for the night here. Uh, this is a Honda Odyssey EX. Again, categorical funds replacing uh, the van really on its last legs right now. I don't think we're going to be able to continue to keep that on the road, but uh, uh, we only received one bid here, um, 3271. Are you, are you sure? I am sure, sure no. because I, I, I remember we purchased the van not that long ago. That the career, I mean, that the, the colony we used it quite a bit. But there was a second van that now is no longer, oh, it's on its last legs, yeah. and, and that's replacing that. And, and I understand where the money's coming from, I'm just trying to think of yeah. No, you, 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 you're correct, Mr. Vice Chair. Yeah, yeah. just it's here. But that one's been around. Well, I thought it was fairly recent we bought that one from Culinary Arts. Oh, they use it, but it's, yeah, I think it's at least off the top of my head. It, it was a few years ago, at the very least. Uh, I think it was three. Um, my memory is That's correctly. the one that's on its last leg? No, no, it was another one. Oh. It's a much older one that's on its last leg. Okay. That one actually replaced another one on its last leg. So we're not replacing that recent purchase. No, oh no, absolutely not. We don't, we don't work on that hard. Okay, just play, uh, again, I'm not criticizing, but again, I think we have to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. You, why? Well, Shaver, you have the right to ask all the questions you'd like, and it clarifies the, the, the argument on, on the item you're talking about. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Because I keep hearing in my head, the old Beatles song, Tell Me Why. Mm -hmm. Would you like to sing? Wait a minute. I don't think anybody knew that song. <laughs> if you want to sing that song. Mr. Perry here and Al have no idea what that song is. They might. No, I know they don't. <laughs> Anyone else? Dr. McGee. Chairman Borges. Yes. Vice Chair Burke. Yes. Mrs. Capwell. Yes. Mrs. Nato. Yes. Mrs. Kukeskis. Yes. It looks like we have another bid, Mr. Perrier. Um, I will make a motion to discuss and approve bid 20-11, Strategic Planning Services. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Perrier. So the, the district actually put together a bid for strategic planning services. Uh, it was due in today. Uh, we didn't receive any bids by the 10 o'clock cutoff, but uh, after 10 o'clock, bids did, become, did, did come in. And I think because yesterday was a big snow day, I think, uh, unfortunately, those bids weren't able to make it to us before the 10 o'clock cutoff on this morning. Uh, as these bids came in a little bit later, I think we're going to take a look at what we have there because I think it's a priority of the superintendent to have a strategic plan put together. Uh, this is something that uh, we are going to want to take a look at and we're going to take a look at these bids that came in. And because nobody bid and there was no bids as of 10 o'clock, I don't have anything to share with you. Per the charter, uh, we now are able to go out and 
take a, take a look at individual people and then solicit uh, bids on our own. I think the starting point will be the two bids that we received after the 10 o'clock uh, cutoff. We're going to be able to take a look at them. So uh, as we have some time to actually look at those, uh, we're going to figure out what we're going to want to do going forward as I have a chance to sit down with the superintendent. Thank you. Actually, so I'll move the table. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Is there a second on the table? Second. Um, Dr. McGee? Chair before Jay. Yes. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. Mrs. Capo? Yes. Mrs. Nato? Yes. Mrs. Kubiski? Yes. Next, I'll make a motion to discuss and approve um, the, the WSC uh, School Committee Resolution Implementation of solar panels. Uh, you do have in your, in your packet um, a copy of the resolution uh, that hopefully we will approve. Just a quick background. As you know, the city is working to implement solar panels throughout the city. They've identified um, a contract with green management and they have begun uh, identifying uh, locations for the solar panels. And as we know, that some of their locations may have to be approved by the state. However, one of the items in, in the resolution they would have liked to see the council, that is, is for the school committee to issue a resolution supporting uh, the installation of solar panels on, on properties that are managed, controlled by the school committee. Um, in addition, they were looking to um, look to see if they, we could build, or they would build, through grants, a carport, as has been done in other areas of the country, a carport on top of which uh, solar panels would be installed. And this carport would be installed in, at the, in the Winsocket High parking lot near the Carissa. One of the benefits of that is that we would get a new parking lot Plus, we would get the carport and to be able to draw off some of the savings on the electrical. But one of the, the resolutions, as has been drafted, is I don't believe we should uh, approve the installation of solar panels on the buildings, existing buildings that we own, that we manage, especially the roofs or any other location of, the, of, of those properties as well as any of the fields that we control and manage. Um, notably Barry Field, notably uh, the, we've got a park in Vernon, notably we have uh, the, the, uh, the land between the middle schools. So the only thing I'd like to see if we pass is a resolution to support the solar panel project at the installation of the carport and at the Socket High parking facility at the Socket High uh, parking lot. That's basically what the resolution is. And hopefully we've all had a chance to look at that. Any comments? Mr. Chairman, yeah, of course. I got to tell say. Of course. <laughs> uh, I did read this, Mr. Chairman, and um, I can agree wholeheartedly that we do not want um, any, any uh, solar panels placed on our existing property. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I also do not think we should be putting solar panels around a school uh, with carports. I know some school in Massachusetts, I believe, just did this. Um, but, you know, I, I, I just, I, I, I can't approve that part. Um, Why not? Because solar panels um, should not be placed around the school. Uh, there's still some, uh, uh, studies out um, discussing uh, some aspects of the solar panels, and, and then we haven't uh, completely uh, studied uh, the effect of, of all these solar panels. I'm out for solar energy, um, but I don't think it should be around the school. I know the city council has done ex that question was asked of the city council in terms of what are the risks of implementing uh, solar panels regarding health, and that study has been done. Uh, by the council, um, and the results of that study was there is no problem. So I don't see it in other school districts have, have done it. There has been no problem, and so I think it's just a, a benefit um, in, in many ways, both to, not only to the school department, but to the community at large. But other comments, please. Sure. Would the city then maintain essentially ownership? Never mind, I already read it. It's in there. 
of, of the overall maintenance of the, the actual car board itself when I'm saving it. Yes. Yes, they would. Thank This is NATO. This is Capiscus. Any thoughts?
Dr. McGee was there, Dr. Cole was there, Mr. Mariani, um, Dr. Sullivan, Glenn Morrell, Sarah Report, and Carolyn uh, Tebow by phone. Um, and we basically discussed, you know, policies that we need, and I mentioned what those policies are. We haven't had, as, a, as I indicated to Chairman Bourget, I didn't know as policy subcommittee chair what my responsibilities yeah. were. Was it to draft policies, or was it to ask that policies be drafted? Is it my job to review the policy handbook? Didn't really know where we were. Part of this discussion was to make that determination as to where that leadership is going to come from. Right. And it's going to come from legal. They're going to recommend the policies that we need to be looking at, we need to be adding, revising, that sort of thing, and that they would be drafting those policies. And the issue kind of arose out of homeschooling policy which we kind of started to discuss when Joe Cooper was here and then it kind of languished. And I finally just threw together a policy myself uh, because I just wanted us to move something out of committee. Nothing had been moved out since the transgender policy. So essentially, we discussed the, the procedure as to how that's going to work. We're going to discuss those policy, uh, the legal, our legal team is going to present us with draft policies which we'll be able to review so that we can have a meaningful discussion at policy subcommittee meetings of draft policy that's already before us, instead of looking at South Kingston's and East Greenwich's and Providence and trying to cobble something together. Um, essentially, that work will be done for us. And with the intention to eventually have a completed, updated um, policy handbook, which we, we have a policy handbook, but some of those policies were approved without our colonial subcommittee. Some of them were added without actually getting school committee approval. Um, and we just need to clean up our act with regard to those policies. And I believe that's what the intention of, of that meeting was to discuss the process as to how we're going to get there. Um, because this committee is sitting for at least another year. Um, and for the last few years, there really wasn't an active policy subcommittee. So we just need to get that moving forward. And I personally needed some direction as to how it was to be done because they've never been on it. We didn't really have an active policy right. committee to give me any guidance. So that's part of what we discussed. It's, it's a great start. I mean, it just breaks the ice because, like you said, what in the world should we be doing? What should we be putting in a handbook? What policies do we really need? Because oftentimes, uh, sorry, you would say, well, we don't have a policy on this, that, and the other thing. We need to make sure that we have all the policies that we should have and the policies we believe we should need. So, so I think it's a great discussion. So Joe Cooper, we, we began this conversation. Sorry, would you please speak? I'm sorry. We, we began this conversation some years ago, and I, I know Joe Cooper had drafted a list of policies that you must have, which I know he shared with the superintendent at some point because it became part of the evaluation, it became part of the superintendent's evaluation, and we can rekindle that document and put it back in front of this newer committee so that we're clear on what we must have and what is more discretionary. But if what you're saying is you'd like legal to take the initiative of sort of directing you with respect to policies, that's fine. It hasn't historically been our understanding that we were to sort of feed that to you, but rather advise once you decided on how you wanted to revise the existing policies. So I remember Joe Cooper, and we were talking about policies some years ago, and he drafted policy. You may have had your hand in it, but I remember he presented it, and that's the last policy we saw. So, oftentimes, if you have a list of the policies we should have, well, do we have one? If the answer is no, then we appreciate that by draft we brought to the subcommittees and the, every single one that we're talking about. Uh, Mrs. Kapiskis mentioned about four or five policies that we were looking to add. That's probably on your list as well. So, we would want to definitely have that presented to the subcommittee and then come to the full committee for approval. I, I will certainly go back and, and dig out that document which looked at the current state of Rhode Island law and um, make sure that we're working in tandem on what we need to update. Good. Okay. Next 
I'll make a motion to discuss the district organizational chart. Is there a second? Second. Dr. McGee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so you have in your packet a chart. Um, it is the Wasaka Education Department organizational chart. This chart reflects um, some subtractions and additions to uh, central office positions. Uh, as the committee knows, uh, we uh, no longer have an assistant superintendent um, position in the district, and that was uh, replaced with um, the um, position of um, uh, curriculum development, director of curriculum development. So this organizational chart reflects those modifications. So if you uh, start from the top, you have the Woonsocket School Committee, um, the Woonsocket School, uh, School Committee Clerk, um, Ms. Blaze, um, would report um, to the Woonsocket School Committee as, as its clerk. Um, superintendent reports directly to the Woonsocket School Committee, and uh, the administrative assistant is, is also Ms. Blaze, uh, who reports to me. Uh, below the superintendent, we have all of the directors, beginning with the Director of Administration and Finance, the Chief Operating Officer, Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations. To the right, the Director of Curriculum and Development, Director of Special Education, and the Director of Literacy and Title I. So those positions that are on the right of that chart would be curricular positions, positions to the, to the left would be more operational positions in the district. If you go down below that level, then you would have all of the principals. Uh, we have the Woonsocket High School, Woonsocket Area Career and Technical Center, principal and director at Hamlet Middle School, principal at the Winona Middle School principal, each of the elementary principals, and we also added our um, English language learners coordinator, uh, who is uh, Ms. Pia. So, all of those positions will report directly to the superintendent. Thoughts, comments? If, if, if I could add also, oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, sure. we're in the process of, of creating a, um, an organizational chart for each department as well, because, you know, as, as the committee knows, uh, each, each of these departments are, are not just solo uh, departments. There's not just one person to lead. There, there are people that report to the directors, um, even though they're not a part of this, this organizational right. chart. Right. So we will actually be, uh, we're working on that, and we'll be presenting that to the committee at a later date. Um, and, and, and I think it's, it's good because it gives the committee a sense of, of all of those positions in the district and who they report to and who's responsible for that. Anyone? Dr. McGee? Yes, I have one question. Um, I'm particular, I have a question for the familiarity with this department. It says Director of Special Education. I just want to make sure that in approving this organizational chart, we're not eliminating positions that aren't indicated here with the Assistant Special Ed Director, which has been vacant for many, many years. Uh, but it's still a part of the organization chart. We're not eliminating. No, we're not. And, and um, when when we come to the committee, probably in January, that's going to be reflected in that. So so the special education department will have its organizational chart. So that it will it'll be found in there. Just want to make sure. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Any, anyone else? Dr. McGee. Chair Forge. Yes. Vice Chair Burke. Yes. Mrs. Capwell. Yes. Mrs. Cato. Yes. Before we adjourn, I just want to take this opportunity to wish all of you here and all your families and friends wonderful holidays and a fantastic new year. Ditto. Ditto. All dittos? No, no dittos. Ditto. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn at 8.55. Motion to adjourn. Seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.